And so the question is, what is the Bible here to teach us about? And what does the Bible presume that we already know? And there are a lot of things that the Bible presumes that we already know. I'm Brad Belshner, here today with Dr. Alistair Roberts. We're talking about biblical and systematic theology. And today specifically, we want to talk about, is Biblicism bad? It helps to know what we're talking about. Biblicism is a term that's often been used in reference to a specific distinctive of evangelicals, and particularly in the Bevington quadrilateral. Um, it's one of those terms that people re refer to. So it helps to define it. I think Biblicism for many people has been seen as a very positive thing. It's about taking scripture seriously, about putting weight upon scripture, about the treating Bible it... focus, yeah. Yes, <laughs> taking, taking the scripture as something that is reliable and truthful. But yet that is not quite what we're referring to. Um, we believe, I hope, both of us, in taking the Bible very seriously and believing in its right. truth. But yet, the question is, what place does it have within the larger framework of God's revelation? Is it the only thing that we have? Or is there more that we can learn? Right. And how do you define Biblicism? I would define it as that elevation of the Bible to such a high level that it occludes other things that we need to take into account. So one example of this might be in the area of ethics. The Bible does not teach us anything on an issue such as necrophilia. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but yet, I don't think any of us need it to teach us on that issue, because we know from right, nature. Don't, don't say necrophilia is okay because there's not a Bible verse for it. <laughs> exactly. So we don't need the Bible to speak to every one of these issues because God has given us um, revelation in nature. There's natural law. And so to treat the Bible as the Bible alone, it's, it leaves us without attention to these sorts of issues. But beyond that still, it leads us to find verses or to force verses to argue things that we don't really need the Bible to argue. What do you mean? So if we were going to talk about something like necrophilia, people might get some verses and force them towards that end in a way that discredits the author moral authority of the oh, Bible I mean, they more might try to take some verses that aren't really talking about that and twist it because Precisely. they need a verse so badly to talk about it. And we don't need a verse to talk about many of these things. But when God does give us a verse, he gives us a verse for a good reason. He gives us a verse for things that we need to learn. And so the question is, what is the Bible here to teach us about? And what does the Bible presume that we already know? And there are a lot of things that the Bible presumes that we already know. It presumes, beyond that, things that we will exercise in prudence and wisdom and common sense. Right. That we can organize these things ourselves without needing the Bible to tell us exactly, step by step, what to do. And often in, in circles that emphasize Biblicism, you see prudential categories of thought de-emphasized. It's, it's not about prudence if you have a divinely inspired verse that commands you to do something about it. Yes. Okay. And in addition to that, there's also the sidelining of philosophical categories. And systematic categories. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And this kind of elevation of Scripture, this paradoxical elevation of Scripture too high, beyond what it's supposed to be, trying to make Scripture do what it's not supposed to do, it also eliminates common ground that we normally should have with unbelievers. We should normally be able to say, okay, here's basic reality, here's uh, natural law, we all know that murder is wrong and stuff like that. It's, we, can, we can appeal much more to simply the way things are with unbelievers if we're not trying to say, well, the reason that murder is wrong is because the Bible says, it. well, that's, no, that's not the reason it's wrong. That's just a clarification and a repetition of something we should already know as believers and unbelievers, right? Absolutely. I think this is something that's affected the church in speaking on issues such as same-sex marriage that people presume that it's a biblical commandment, then what do you do with unbelievers who don't accept the authority of Scripture? Is there any way to speak to this issue with them? But yet, these things can be seen from just reflecting upon nature. It's part of our sense of equilibrium within the world that God has placed us within. 
I don't right. believe us have that too. And, and even we can if draw they their deny attention. nature, yes. even if they deny nature, the fact remains, we should be able to say confidently, hey, this is nature that you're denying. It's, it should be obvious. It's not like, oh, because you don't accept this book, you don't believe it. It's no, you're, you're accepting something that should be way more clear yes. to you here, written on your hearts. And when we think about the sufficiency of scripture in this context, we do teach the sufficiency of scripture, but sufficiency for the task that God has given it. And so it's like talking about the sufficiency of a steering wheel for steering a car. We don't think of the sufficiency of the steering wheel in detachment from the rest of the steering mechanism or in detachment from the driver. Right. And so we need all of these things together. And scripture is something that works along with God's revelation in nature and with the work of people who accept its authority and act and make judgments. Right. And the reason we have scripture is to on the one hand, teach us the things that we could not otherwise know, the gospel, the means of salvation. You're not going to figure that out by natural revelation. But it's also, on the other hand, to clarify and repeat the things we should already know, really, like don't murder, basic ethics like that. Right, definitely. So yes to sufficiency of Scripture, yes to sola scriptura, but God gives us a lot more to live our lives than just Scripture. Absolutely.